Hey, welcome to the Strong Roots Podcast. My name is Kristen Hill, and we are so excited that you're tuning in today. Our prayer is that you would move one step closer to Jesus through this series. So go ahead and check out this next episode. Hey, Strong Roots, I'm here with Pastor John, and we're in our parenthood season, and today we're talking about human dignity. Mm -hmm. So Pastor John, how would you define dignity, and how do you model a lifestyle that shows you treat everyone with dignity? And I think what they mean by dignity is we're talking about race mm -hmm. and raising your kids in a culture that talks a lot about race. Um, I think that our society has gotten what I think is super unbiblical um, regarding race. I think we made a much bigger deal about it than, than is healthy or godly. Uh, the biblical breakdown of racial barriers is documented super well and truly remarkable. Uh, first off, you know, Moses was in an interracial marriage. It's likely that Moses had an olive skin and his wife was black, mm -hmm. um, which I think is beautiful. Uh, my family obviously was interracial. My dad is a, a white man. My mom is Japanese. And, you know, in the context of their relationship, you know, their parents fought a war against each other. They got married. I'm a mix of both of them. I think that's beautiful. Um, and I can tell you, growing up, it was such a huge deal for our families um, to not be victims. Like, my parents all the time, you know, we got lots of comments uh, about it um, in church, out of church, in school, uh, which is, you know, today I don't think that it's, well, I mean, it is. It is a big deal. But it, it's not. Like, whenever someone would say something to us, it was, you're not a victim. You have a great life. And uh, that's not something that we really need to, to care that much about because if they say something, that's their problem. You're made in the image of God. And I think the one thing that keeps coming to my mind is Paul saying, um, there's neither male nor female, slave nor free, Jew nor Greek. We're all one in Christ Jesus. Right. Your race as a Christian, your culture, your gender, your background, not relevant. What is relevant in our life is Christ Jesus. Right. And for my kids, when they ask questions about that, what I say is, here's what matters. People far from God need Jesus, and people who are followers of God are part of the family of God. And that's regardless of background. Right. Gender, race, country, wealth. We're all one in Christ Jesus. And as a Christian parent, that's what I'm parenting my kids to see. Mm -hmm. And I think the, um, frankly, the you know fairly satanic doctrine and religion of progressivism has brought in this idol this super and it's a really destructive idol you know i mean the ancient gods you know like moloch um were super terrible you know child sacrifice all this terrible stuff and to a lesser extent today i mean i see that again where we have right. a society that is you know damaging our children teaching them you know damaging our children physically you know through crazy hormone mm -hmm. treatments and lots of stuff we'll get to that in a later uh, a later sesh so i won't go into that now yeah. but um but with racial ideology, creating unnecessary divisions, you know, and it's so interesting because my children are more conscious of, and my children, all four of them look pretty white, but they're far more conscious of this than I was. And they're, they're in a homogenous community, like, and it's right. just, it's, I think it's really ungodly and really unfortunate to make uh, such a deal about it, to tell people they're victims, to tell people that because of the actions of ancestors years ago, you know, they're perpetrators of violence, um, yeah, I just, I don't think that's a godly way to live. I don't think that's right. So in your family, how do you celebrate differences in a godly way? I celebrate the oneness that we all have in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a big deal. And yeah. I think that in the same way that my son and daughters have different interests, there are people from different cultures who have different interests. And if it is not sinful... It is part of the creativity that God put in every person, and we can observe it, evaluate whether or not we like it or see it as productive for something in our family. Um, and we can say, hey, I'm glad that they do that, and I can be happy for them. And there's plenty of examples for that in our household. Obviously, my mom is a Japanese person who cooks Japanese food, and um, you know, I, in particular, do not like Japanese food at all. Uh, there's a fish oil flavor that, to me, tastes like a beach on a sunny day. But um, <laughs> my kids eat it, they talk about it, they talk about the differences all the time, and I say, hey, that's good. Right. That's good. You know, it's not better, it's not worse, it's good. And if you like it, great. If you don't, you don't have to do it. And we celebrate it, and that's fine, but it's not Race doesn't need to be a central yeah. conversation in our household. Why? 
because we're all one in Christ Jesus. Right. Speaking as an interracial family. Like right. We're all one in Christ Jesus. And like the, the color, the melanin in my skin and, and, and the less of it in hers. Mm-hmm. And, you know, my kids look different. It doesn't matter. What's amazing is people often ask us, not often, but several times, have asked us if we're a blended family because we have two kids that look like me and we have two kids that look like her. And, uh, you know, I just think it's great that it's yeah. not something that we really think about in our household. And uh, that's intentional. Like we choose not to make it a thing. So on that, how do we, as, a, as parents, teach our kids to not make it a thing and to bring dignity and oneness in Christ in every context? So we're fortunate enough to generally have our kids, um, because of the culture that they're being raised in the school that they go to, it's not a super central thing. They have brought it up a few times, and we point them to the gospel of Jesus. Right. It's the gospel framework. We are not defined by our culture, by our skin color. We're defined by the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's a central thing. And you're going to see this theme in this whole season of strong roots. Mm-hmm. The gospel of Jesus is what defines us. So right. if your kid comes and speaks something that is really ungodly, like, you know, so-and-so is defined by the race. No, we're not. Right. We're not. We're all one in Christ Jesus. We're literally adopted into the family of God. Like, we are part of the same family. And my family, like, our last name supersedes our skin color, right? Like, you relate to me more because you are a hill and my wife right. than you do as a white girl. Like, that's it's just, I mean, I think that's simple hometown basic gospel truth. Right. And if you as a family are making a bigger deal out of race than you are out of the family of God, well, it's an idol. Right. You know, and it's that simple. Um, and it's, it's just, it's not something that we need to focus on as a family because, again, we're not defined by the culture of my mother or the culture of my father. I'm defined by the culture of Christianity rooted in the gospel of Jesus and his redemptive work for all of humanity. So last question, Mm -hmm. I think we have a really awesome opportunity because of your mom, because of our family to be able to teach this to our kids. But what if people are listening and, you know, there are no opportunities to really talk about it because they live in a community where it is maybe generally one, everyone Mm -hmm. looks the same. Um, How can they bring opportunities to their kids, bring it up, talk about it. Like practically they're like, I love this, but my mom is not from Japan. Like how would you coach and teach them to teach their kids this? I would visualize and prepare for what they're gonna face. If you are sending your kids away to college, which is something I would really think twice about before doing today, just because of what college is becoming, um, I would visualize, okay, what are they gonna face and how do I wanna coach them to respond to that? Mm -hmm. So I tell my kids, hey, right now where you're from, people have not talked. A ton about race, in part because it's a fairly homogenous, you know, community, um, but in part because in our household, I think we've had a pretty godly reform perspective on this. Right. When you go there, people are going to say these things, and I want to identify what those things are. That is, a winless idolatry that will produce division and misery, mm-hmm. just like all idolatry does in life. Idol, I D O L, stands for it doesn't offer life. Mm-hmm. And the religion of race, the religion of critical theory, the religion of progressivism, what has it done for the people? I don't know very many people who buy into those religions who are like, you know what? Life is good. God's really blessed us. Like, things are good. No. You're going to say, well, things are terrible. We have to tear it all down. It's awful. And that's what all idolatry does. And I want to prepare my kids for how they're going to think, the framework that they're going to think about those things um, in whatever context they're going into. And as a parent, that's our job. We're preparing our kids to identify idolatry in their life. Um, to redeem and and reject the idolatry and re- redeem what they can in a gospel framework, you know, and that's that's what we do with race. That's your job as a parent. I strongly suggest every parent have these intentional conversations, um, you know, with all of our kids during the George Floyd riots, which you know happened in our hometown. Mm-hmm. Um, we had a good deal of conversations about, hey, this is what's happening. You know, this is this is what people believe about it. This is what we as Christians think, and that's just intentional conversations with your kids instead of having them look at screens, which is a topic that's upcoming. <laughs> yes. We're out of time. So if you could leave them with any challenge, what would it be? Point your kids to the gospel and watch your own heart because it's tempting. Other religions are tempting. You know, you read the Bible, it's like, oh, these idiots. Like, they just fall into these other religions, whatever. Like, dude, when you can gain accolades by buying into a movement, by posting a specific picture or statement when these things happen and have everybody be like, good for you. Like, that's right. tempting. You know, but here's the deal. 
you have to look at everything in the framework of the gospel and say, like, are we all one in Christ Jesus or are we dividing over this? Like, I am not a victim. I am victorious. You know, and, and that's a big deal. I mean, if Paul can get shipwrecked, beaten, whipped, all these things, and say, I rejoice through all of this because God's power is being made perfect in me, a couple of dirty looks that someone is getting or right. getting wrongfully arrested or facing persecution or being beaten um, or killed for any reason is not irredeemable right. or even bad news in light of the gospel of Jesus. And I want us to train our kids to look at all things, all times, all people and say, Jesus redeems it all. God wins. Life is good. Amen. I'm going to leave it at that. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and I'm excited to catch you next time. Bye. If you enjoyed today's episode, make sure to follow us on our other social media platforms. We don't want you to miss out on any future content. Thank you so much again, guys. I hope you have a great day and I want you to know I am personally praying that your roots stay strong.